Okay, for a maxilla, you see for a casual observer, it appears that this is maxilla. Whereas it is not so. This is the zygomatic prominence. This is the pre-maxilla. The maxilla is only this bit because we are talking of the maxillary antrum. We are dealing with head neck malignancy, which is coma cell or salivary gland tumors. So these malignancies will occur in the antral mucosa, not in the bone. And hence a maxillectomy is basically aimed at a wide local excision of the mucosa. <coughs> However, the mucosa cannot be curettaged and it has generally involved the bone. <coughs> so a bone removal along with the tumor only necessitates a only permits a wide local excision. So we should know what are the surfaces of the maxilla and what are the processes. There is a difference between processes and surfaces. Now surfaces are, this is the anterior lateral surface, this is the posterior, lateral, posterior surface, this is the orbital surface, this is the nasal surface, okay? Surfaces means that something which has to do something with the cavity. Processes are something which have nothing to do with the cavity actually. But we need to remove them, we need to cut them so that a maxillectomy can be performed. Now this is an alveolar process. Try to appreciate that alveolar process is not in communication with the enteral cavity. It is only a process. And we need to divide it so that we can finally remove the maxilla. So this is an alveolar process. This being the maxillary tuberosity at the end of the third molar. Now this uh, thing is the zygomatic process. This is, there is not no enteral cavity into this in, inside this. This is only a process. Similarly, this is a nasal process. There is no cavity inside it. We can we will have to divide it here. We will have to divide it here so that we can finally remove it. So these are the surfaces and the processes which I've explained. Now, if we want to do a maxillectomy, a maxillectomy, as I've already said, is basically a wide local excision of the mucosa which is involved. But mucosa, if curettaged, will get positive margins. So we need to remove the bone also along. So if we understand that maxillectomy is basically a wide local excision of the antral tumor, then we should know that a maxillectomy can be a inferior maxillectomy, which involves actually removal of only the alveolar process. However, the maxilla will also open. So we call it an inferior maxillectomy. And there can be a partial maxillectomy. There is no distinct difference between an inferior and a partial, except that partial is slightly bigger than an inferior maxillectomy. And you can do a subtotal. Subtotal, you will go above the this foramen. Inferior nerve will also be involved in it. Subtotal will only not remove the orbital flow, but it will remove the entire maxillary antrum, leaving the orbital, orbital flow. But if you do a total maxillectomy, the orbital flow will also go. And if you want to do a radical maxillectomy, if the case, if the tumor has gone into the eye, eye, eye ball, I mean the the, the orbit, then you will require an eventration of the orbital contents also along with the remove the maxilla. So if we want to do let's say a total maxillectomy what all cuts would be required. First of all an incision which is a uh, the incision is generally the nasolabial incision which goes from the philtrum uh, below the vestibule across the ala up, up towards the medial canthus. This is what a nasolabial incision is. But if we drop it here and slit the, uh, slit the lip also in between in the middle, that becomes a Weber Ferguson incision. And a Weber Ferguson incision, if extended up to the eyebrow, is called a Lynch extension. If it's extension up to the lateral canthus, it's called a Diffenbeck's extension. Diffenbeck's extension. Some books write this incision, entire one, to be a, a Weber Ferguson incision. But uh, most of the books uh, agree that this bit is Weber Ferguson, this is Diffenbeck's extension, this is Lynch extension. So you give an incision according to the kind of maxillectomy that you want to do. If you want to do a total maxillectomy, you will have to have a different vex extension up to the lateral canthus. And then you will start lifting the flap depending upon if has it gone through this lateral wall or not. If it has not gone through the lateral wall, go right up to the periosteum and start lifting up the flap. When you lift up the flap, go up to the posterior lateral border. And then start bearing this to some extent, as much as you can. Okay, so this is the ITF and in the ITF, if you want to take the maxillary artery before touching the maxilla, you can tie the axillary artery by taking away the 
mm, a coronoid process. So, uh, so this is what the flap is about. Lift it right up to here and now you can start giving the cuts. You give a cut here at the nasal process, you make a cut either through the orbital foramen, come out here in the ITF and with a giddy saw cut it if it's a total, uh, total maxillectomy. Cut it, this will become free. Okay, so higher up it will become free, laterally it will become free. Now make a cut here in the palate, go right up to the soft palate and between the soft and hard palate go uh, laterally and here knock the knock off the maxillary tuberosity and the tumor or the maxilla comes out. Now also understand what is the relationship of the pterygoid plates. Many people feel the pterygoid plates need to go along with the maxillectomy. It's illogical. The tubro these uh, these tub uh, the pterygoid plates have nothing to do with maxillary entrum. Maxillary entrum is within this. It's a very small cavity within this. This is a separate thing. There is a pterygo maxillary fissure in between the pterygoid plates and the maxilla. Mm. So the pterygoid plates don't really have to go when a maxillectomy is being done. Just just put a chisel here and, and, uh, and um, uh, hammer it a little with the mallet and the finally this will come out and this will come out preferably and more safely if you have bared this also a little bit otherwise uh, it will be the soft tissue attachments will be impinging on the removal so bear this area and take it out this becomes a total maxillectomy otherwise you study the CT scans well and know where all the tumor is and accordingly plan your wide local excision of the maxilla like in today's case the tumor is in the in the in the floor of the nasal cavity the medial wall of the maxilla isn't it lateral wall the medial wall of the maxilla, medial wall of the maxilla. Sir. fine so and it's gone to the palate sir. so what we need to do is basically um, incision as colonel prasad suggested why make a, a classical you know uh, weber ferguson with the Diffenbeck's extension we'll give a nasal labial incision drop it down the lip will be called a classical Weber Ferguson, lift the cheek flap and stay underneath the inferior alveolar nerve, divide it here with a chisel hammer and divide it here and, uh, and the palate and drop it down. Okay, this incision, the, because the palate is infiltrated here, we'll try to save the premaxilla, we'll go like this, but if the inferior wall seems to be involved, then we might have to go in the middle. So it will all depend upon the tumor on the CD scan and per op. Okay? So that should be all.